Hey, what's up everyone? Jono from OpenLandSec here with another Naked CTF video. What is Naked CTF? Well, it's the first time I'm attempting a particular CTF exercise. In this case today, it's going to be Legacy from Hack the Box. Um, the purpose here is to show the entire process of capturing one of these uh, uh, CTF boxes um, rather than doing a walkthrough. So, um, instead of just showing like how to do it, it's the whole process, what's and all, all the Googling, all the uh, places where it gets stuck and have to find things out and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm ready to go here. I've got the machine that I've just launched a few minutes ago. Um, I've got my notes set up, ready to go here. Uh, I am trying to get better on note taking. So let's just get into it. We're going to uh, do nmap. Minus SC, minus SB, minus ON, nmap one.txt, and the IP is 10, 10, 10, 4, 10, 10, 10 dot 4, T4 timing, verbose. Let's let that go. That's going to give us a top 1000 ports. After that's finished doing the uh, service discovery on the three ports that it has found, uh, we'll run nmap again in the background um, while we play around with a few other things. And in fact, let's queue that up here. So we're going to do nmap uh, p uh, sc minus sv uh, on nmap 2.txt. Uh, and then we're going to have the uh, t4 timing and verbose. There we go. Let's do that. And it helps if we give an IP address as well to target. That would be useful, wouldn't it? Okay, so <clears throat> going back to our results, the first thing we'll kind of do is grab what we've already found. The SCSV means that we've got some uh, scripts that have run rather than just port enumeration. So that gives us a little bit of extra data to work with. And straight off the bat, we can see, um, you know, it's a Windows box straight away, 139445, the real common ones for uh, SMB or Windows file sharing or Samba or whatever you want to call it. So I think that's the uh, the first thing that we're going to look at because there's not much else that's open, to be honest. This is an easy box, so don't expect this to be too difficult. Um, just completed an easy box, um, which was called uh, Jerry. Um, was really surprised that it only took, you know, one uh, foothold to uh, actually exploit both the unprivileged and the uh, uh, root flag as well. So let's have a look what we've got. Um, we've got SMB security mode, account used guest, authentication level user, challenge uh, response supported, message signing disabled, dangerous by default, <clears throat> protocol negotiation failed SMB2. Okay, well that's interesting because that may mean that this guy is um, <clears throat> working with SMB uh, Protocol V1, which gives us all sorts of uh, options in terms of uh, exploitation or gaining a foothold. Uh, the Nmap uh, SMB scripts have uh, taken a stab and guessed that this is Windows XP, which would explain the lack of SMB2. Uh, I don't think SMB v2 was available until uh, Windows 2000, I believe. Anyway, let's have a look. So the next thing that we would want to do is um, have a look at our uh, full port scan. And it just found the same three ports. So we know that we've covered everything now. Nothing to worry about. Um, let's do SMB map. And I'm a little rusty because I've been away from um, I've been away from CTF exercises. So some of the command syntax and everything else is uh, escaping me. So just bear with me while I refresh myself along the way. So SMB map um, is going to uh, give us a enumeration of the SMB services that are running on the host. That said, in the past, I found it to be a little bit weird, like it didn't report certain shares. Yeah, and see, now it's thrown a, an exception. Something weird has happened. Um, so I'm just, I liked SMB map because it gave me kind of the output in 
a format that I found a lot more digestible and readable. <clears throat> what I will do is go and check. Maybe I'm working with an older version of this um, that has had some updates. Um, so off uh, off camera, I'll go and uh, actually check the GitHub repo and make sure that I'm up to date. Um, yeah, I just I, I liked it as a tool because it um, had some you know interesting and um, cleaner ways of reporting things rather than using uh, some of the other SMB tools. It doesn't look like it's going to actually do anything here, so we might just kill that. Uh, and let's go back to good old SMB client. We'll use the L switch, which I believe is uh, list uh, 10, 10, 10, 4. Uh, null password. Mm, okay, so <clears throat> we need to think about um, when we do SMB client, um, is it actually trying to send a uh, default username, workgroup slash Jono, and then a empty password, or do we need to uh, try and specify a specific uh, session, so to speak, a null session, I should say. Um, I do have some notes here for SMB enumeration. Um, so let's just kind of step through these one by one, see what they come up with. <clears throat> no harm, good good opportunity to do a bit of a refresher. Um, let's uh, try that again. 10, 10, 10, 4. Okay, I think that is just looking up some of the net group, uh, the work group status stuff. Not really useful in this case. Uh, NBT scan. NBT scan, yep, NBT scan, 10, 10, 10, 4, okay, <clears throat> NetBIOS name, legacy, uh, server user, nothing there, okay, this is looking a little bit interesting, um, we may run the um, nmap SMB scripts again, and go a little broader. Um, yeah, this command here, which looks specifically for vulnerabilities, could be interesting. And then SMB client. Oh, that's maybe why I went wrong with SMB client, because I didn't do the uh, forward slash format. Um, no, session setup failed. Now I'm wondering if it's. Um, <clears throat> needs a specific instruction to use a null session. And I have seen this in the past. So SMB client null session. Um, we could have a look at enum for Linux as well. Um, SMB map. Let's just have a look at this. It's a uh, funny syntax. I remember you've got to do something, percent something. Um, so that's nmap, enum for Linux, uh, Samba, enum for Linux. Yeah, we should probably run that anyway. Um, I mean, we might get something useful out of it. Enum for Linux. Yeah. And then we pass it the just the IP no switch ten 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 dot four. <clears throat> wow, that was fast. Okay, protocol one thirty nine SMB cannot request session four four five uh, SMB session failed status access denied. So. While it has this SMB share, it seems to be reasonably locked down. Um, server allows sessions using null username and password. Okay. That's the NBT stat. I think NBT stat's a system utility rather than a pen testing utility. Um, <clears throat> okay. Let's have a look 
we're not getting anything really useful at the moment. We were going to see if the SMB client were SMB client with null credentials. Yeah, so you single quotes and then end to specify no password. So let's, let's, let's clear. So you is empty and then no password. So yeah, it won't even give us a list of um, shares. Reconnecting with SMB1 for workgroup listing. I think SMB1 is a big, big, big red flag here. Generally, anything SMB1 is very bad because it means an old operating system. Um, it means um, SMB is vulnerable to like replay type attacks where if you get a hash, you can reuse it and these sorts of things. I haven't done a whole lot of SMB1 exploitation, but um, I don't want to jump into guided mode yet, but let's i mean we've done quite a bit of the enumeration here and we're just not getting anything back on smb um if we go here we have protocol negotiation failed that's for smb2 time mm. Computer name is legacy. That's not something else. So the work group name is HDB. Computer name is legacy. And that's kind of like the same as the NBT stat output. Let's. <clears throat> let's see what else. Um, we can get from Nmap. So I'll dive into my unorganized pile of notes. And we're going to run nmap scripts like this. Ten 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 dot four. And that's going to be the same as what we got before. That was in the original. Uh, SC, SV options. So maybe we just do SMB star. And that will be a lot more comprehensive. It's basically going to run every script that Nmap has related to SMB. Anticipate this might take a little while. Um, doesn't look too bad so far. Almost there. Um, is there anything else we should be doing? Mm. So, things to try. Very little available via S. Exposed SMB services, possible SMB V1 and not V2. Exploit question mark. Maybe there is some remote exploit that we can use. Again, I don't know a whole lot about it. We can take a quick look in search exploit. Um, what would we search for? SMB. Quite a lot, I would imagine. Yeah. Quite a lot. So something like going back to 2000... 
slash XP SMB authentication remote overflow. Um, some of these that mention uh, SMB V1 specifically, SMB server V1, V2 mount point arbitrarily device open privilege escalation. See, I don't know which of these are real and which are not. Um, the rest are kind of application exploits related to SMB. Come on, man, you said one second to go. Oh, it looks like it's stuck. 95.24. Mm. Okay. I'm really curious about the exploitation side of things. So again, going to my pile of notes. Um, yeah, maybe that PS exec SMB thing is available. No, no, but but. <clears throat> Let's do SMB Vuln. SMB dash Vuln. Let's do output in case it hangs again. And map SMB one dot txt. And map SMB. Oh, it's finished already. Okay. Results. Ports are open. RCE vulnerability in Microsoft SMB C SMB V1 servers MS17010. Hi. Remote code execution vulnerability exists in Microsoft SMB V1 servers. Blah blah blah. Okay, RCE sounds good. So Windows Server 2000 SP4 XP SP2 SP3. Okay, so V1, SMB V1 was still around in, wow, still around in Windows 2000 SP4. I thought that they had switched to SMB V2 by that point, but obviously not. Um, okay, so we need to find a, let's try and find an exploit that, uh, is specific to this CVE. So we'll do search, exploit, and nothing, okay? Let's see what the interwebs have. Exploit. Mm. So by default, the stuff that appears at the top of the search results is always the official CV records, which doesn't have any uh, actual Oh man, so WannaCry uses this. Petya, which is ransomware, uses this. Uh, okay, this is Eternal Blue. Is it Eternal Blue? Mm, does it have like a, a nickname? No. Doesn't look like it. I'm a 17... Seventeen zero one zero. Yeah, Eternal Blue. Okay. So it's likely Metasploit will have 
some code for this. Um, let's just check exploit DB for MS seventeen zero one zero. Oops, zero one zero. Yeah. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. So not the actual CVE, but the Microsoft Security Bulletin reference. Reference, I should say. Hmm. So that's the one that's present in Metasploit. Uh, we could give Metasploit a go, but eh, I don't know. Like, I'm just feeling a bit like I don't want to fire up Metasploit. And I'm just not very confident using Metasploit. Like, I can't find my way around it quickly. Um, so... I would probably prefer just like a, you know, a standalone um, exploit uh, piece of exploit code or proof of concept or whatever it might be. Like if it gets really difficult to um, execute this exploit, then um, we'll have to, you know, go through the. Uh, Metasploit uh, path. Okay, so here we're looking at the code for this particular example. The exploit might fail and crash a target system depending on what is overwritten. Cool. So what is it like? Does it actually create a reverse shell or? Okay. Okay. I mean, this is all Python, right? Create session. So this is where all the magic happens. Uh, in packet. Okay. Ten second. Then big transaction. Great connection with big SMB first 80. Okay. Exploit. So this is kind of like the main loop. Um, target OS, if not Windows 7 or Windows Server or Windows Vista. The minimum requirement to trigger this bug is SRV OS2 feature list size 2NT. I wonder, is that like a legitimate OS2 reference? Wow. That's pretty cool. Um, all right. Let's um, fire it up and see what happens. It didn't. I couldn't see any reference to like creating a socket for it to fall back on. So I don't know if it's actually reversing what's going on here or um anyway, let's three C. Okay. Uh ten, 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 four. Okay. It doesn't look like it has any command line options. Where's that kind of main main function? Yeah, target. Okay. Target equals argv1, so that should be the the first parameter that's passed. Um, okay. Exploit target argv1. Yeah. Okay. 
Mm. Okay. Impact it. <clears throat> I think it's using Impacket to do some of the payload building and that sort of stuff. So, hit install Impacket. I think. Oh, yeah, I thought it would have already been there, right? Impacket import SMB, right? Three, install, impact it. Yeah, it's already there. Um, I don't really want to go and debug this. So let's um let's uh have a look what else there is. Okay, four, two, three, one, five. Search light. Uh, mirror, four, four, two, three, one, five. So look, four, two, four, two, three, one, five. Uh, okay. My SMB, EDB note, my SMB can be found here. Four, two, three, one, five. Note, exploit should never crash a target. Chance should be zero. Tested on all these versions. Uh, username null, password null. Okay. And there's all the different offsets for the different builds of Windows. Okay. Leak data, read data. This is cool. Uh, but let's see what the execution. Yep, target. Equals RV1. And it has a very similar structure to the other one. Um, seven, three, four, two, three, one, five, ten, 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 dot four. Oops. Four. No module found my SMB. It did mention that in the top um, can be found here HTTP exploit database exploit db okay let's just grab this I don't know if that actually copied but we'll try Eh, okay, let's do this. Something weird going on there. Okay. Let's 
So this file name is the same as the one that we're working with. But it's got all these classes related to S and B. So do we just need to file contains only valid SMB packet format operation? So do we just need to my SMB? Why is it the same file name? In splits four, two, three, one, five. Four, two, three, one, four. Okay. Look, I'm just going to do this on an absolute gamble. Um, we're going to copy this and then we're going to create my smb.py. My smb.py. Place that in there. And we're going to try this again. New. No. Uh, target OS Windows 5.1. So it seems like it's at least making a connection, but then failing. Um, somewhere in the guts of it where it's sending. And is this because it's Python 3 instead of 2? No. Okay. Mm. Right, I'm going to try one more. Again, I don't want to be sitting here like trying to figure out the uh, Python errors because A, it'll take me a really long time. And B, I'm sure there's a uh, working uh, exploit available where I don't have to kind of fix things up. If I wasn't recording a video, I'd probably spend the time trying to trying to figure those errors out and um, find out what's going on there, but It's just, uh, oh, this one's Ruby. Okay. Four, three, nine, seven, zero. Uh, this module requires Metasploit. Okay. That's Metasploit, Metasploit. Hmm. All right. Looks like we're firing up Metasploit. MS17010. MS17010. Metasploit. <laughs> it's sad that I need to Google for a bit of info. Otherwise, I'll just be trying to figure it out, you know. Uh, so we want to use this guy. That's the exploit we want to use. Okay. No payload configured, defaulting to reverse TCP. I think that should be okay. We probably don't, yeah, so we need to do Automatic target. Let's see what options there are. So remote hosts. So set our, ho our hosts is going to be 
10, 10, 10, 4. 10, 10, 10, 4. Um, SMB domain is optional. Port is good. Pass user is good. Verify architecture, verify target is good. Then anything else we want to set along the way? Mm, don't think so. So we just run exploit. Okay. <clears throat> Host is likely vulnerable. Windows 5.1 x86 32-bit. Exploit ex aborted due to failure, no target. This module only supports x64 bit targets. Okay, so we want to do uh, 32 bit. MS 17010. Oh, Reddit slash r slash hacking. <gasps> Goodness. Um, okay. Okay, I just want to know is there a 32 bit version uh, for Eternal Blue? Show payloads, yeah. But it's not the payload, it's the actual exploit, right? Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not so worried about the payload. What is it the payload that it's puking on? Target is vulnerable, exploit. This module only supports X. Oh, started reverse TCP handler. Okay. Okay. So it is the payload itself. So Metasploit, Windows, Metasploit, payload, Windows, 32 bit. Um. Metapreta. Yep, Windows shell reverse TCP. Thirty-two. Sixty-four. So. So we probably just want to do Windows, all X64. Mm. Okay, this is a bit of a spanner in the works. Right, let's take a step back and see if Metasploit can give us like some recommendation, you know, on in terms of what um Yeah, here we go. I mean, look, we're we're using SMB. We're using Metasploit now. We might as well learn some stuff along the way. Metasploit has uh, support for multiple SMB modules, including enumeration, capture, relay, file transfer, exploit. So, um, yeah. So let's run this first. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's a good exercise. 
then we do run smb 10 10 10 4 and that verifies smb detected host is running smb it doesn't explicitly say the smb version though which is i find a bit weird <clears throat> okay so metasploit has a module for yeah okay so let's try the eternal blue scanner um it's just this syntax that i can't follow from module to module um okay check check smb Module does not support check. No options. Check architecture, double pulsar. Mm, okay, I guess it's changed in the documentation. Ahos 10, 10, 10, 4, run. Host is likely vulnerable, okay. Windows 5.1 x86 32 bit. Um, we don't have credentials, so we can't do PS exec. Uh, as of 2021, Metasploit supports a single exploit module for which has the capability to target Windows 7 8.1. Yeah, and that doesn't include XP though, does it? So, if we try, was that the same one we were using before? Eternal Blue? Yeah, it was. God dang it. Um, show options. <clears throat> our host, our port, verify architecture, verify target. Um, there's a Metasploit wrap up. Okay. All right, let's do this. Let's set verify architecture to false. And let's set verify target to false. And let's run it, let's see if it does it. Nope, it'll still complain that it's... Okay, back to Google. Eternal blue, 32 bit. Oh, this is the one that came from the NSA. Cool. Go away. Go away. Okay. Does this reference 32? Lots of students who I've talked with about this vulnerability miss something when it comes to MS17010 vulnerability in 32-bit systems. Okay. Okay. Imported means the use of the 11 path eternal blue module. Okay. This module runs, okay, this is the one that we're using, right? Within Metasploit, this module runs within Windows Server and Server 2008 in X64. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
six. Firstly, as we focus on x86 architecture, we have to prepare our system in order that all runs smoothly. At this point, we have to install Wine. Are you kidding me? I don't want to install Wine. No. I don't understand why we need a 32-bit environment in order to exploit a 32-bit environment. I mean, he's describing the same problem that we got, but, um, Windows 7, 32, 64 bit, maybe that works on XP. I mean, this was only updated last month. Mm. This bug is like years old. Oh, and there's that my SMB that we were talking about. All right, I'm going to try it. It looks like this guy has wrapped up a bunch of different code and bits and pieces that are lying around. Uh, this guy, it, um, I mean, I could be completely down the rabbit hole here and looking at, <laughs> yeah, I could definitely be completely off track here. So we're going to do Python 3 MS 17 IP 10, 10, 10, 4 code file. So I'm assuming that's this. CD6. This exploit does not support this target. Oh my god, so close. All right, screw it. I'm going into guided mode. Three ports. Uh, what is it? MS seventeen zero one zero. MS seventeen zero one zero in CVE is also known as. Uh, just give me the CVE. Oh my god. Twenty twenty three. Guessing it's the oldest one. Oh, 2008 CVE. Am I looking at the wrong one altogether?
Like it's not eternal blue. Oh my god. Don't tell me I've been looking at the wrong exploit the whole time. Okay, CBE 2008 SMB. Oh, I have been, I've been looking at the wrong exploit. MS 09001, not eternal blue. That would make sense because it's older than eternal blue. No? 2008 CVE for vulnerability in SMB that allows RCE. Four eight three four. CVE two thousand eight four eight three four. CVE two thousand eight four eight three four. What else is there? How many RCEs were there? Um, 2008-1105, I mean, that's for the Samba implementation, not the Windows implementation. Gotta be it. SMB CVE list. Oh, no, 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 that's Samba Samba. Okay, 2008. SQL Server, no. Semantic Norton, no. Solaris, no. Solaris, no. Samba 3, no. Pearl, no. Microsoft Windows 2000 Gold through S. P4, XP Gold through SP3 allows remote SMB servers to execute arbitrary code in a client machine by replaying the NTLM credentials of a client user. As, expo uh, as demonstrated by Backrush. Reflection attack. Okay. Buffer underflow. Allows remote attackers to execute arbitrary code via SMB. So that's 4038. Okay. CGI, no. SQL injection, no. 4834. 
Okay, so this or well, this is our most likely candidate. Let's try four zero three eight four. Man, I can't believe I've been looking in the wrong spot. <laughs> well, that's part of the game, isn't it? Learning what the hell you're actually doing. Nope, that's not it. Um. Okay, so this is the replay of NTLM credentials. Four zero three seven. Four zero zero three seven. Oh my God. Okay, so it's not that one. This affects XP as well, 4835. We're basically brute forcing the CVE ID through Man, this is embarrassing. And that's it. That's the end of 2008. Two thousand eight CVE ID for a vulnerability in SMB that allows for remote code execution. We've tried four, eight, three, five. Yeah. We're getting the format wrong. CVE two zero zero eight four numbers, right? Hint. Give Nmap the following option to scan it. Yeah, that's where we started, wasn't it? We did do that. That's what pointed us towards Eternal Blue. It's in B1. MS17. Zero, 010. Zero. Oh. Forty-two fifty. So we've been digging into that one, which is Eternal Blue, but then it's also reporting in this one, 4250, which is a separate CVE, 4250, oh my god. Where is 4250 here? 4250. Not even in the list. What the hell? We were searching by SMB as a keyword, right? So let's do CV 2008. Was it? 4250. Oh, see, it's because it doesn't mention SMB in the uh, title. Hey, yo. Okay. Right. Well, we went down a rabbit hole. We lost about 30 minutes. Let's see if we can make up for time. Um, let's just see if there's a better split module. Um, okay, let's do search plot MS09-001. No, it's MS08. 
six seven. Search chat and map SMB search exploit MS um oh eight oh six seven. Mm. <clears throat> Right. So there is a Metasploit module. MS O A zero six seven. How to hack Windows XP using <laughs> for beginners. Oh my god, this has been very humbling. Download and install Kali Linux. Yep. Okay. Thank you to the author of Get Astra. You have. Okay, so this is the one that we want. You know what? We could have just done if we were not getting a little bit. Frustrated, we could have done search MS or eight, and then we would have seen uh, MS or eight O O six seven. Can we put two terms in like that? Yeah, see, and we could have just gone use zero. And then we could have gone show options. Then we could have gone show L host uh, set L host. It's going to be uh, 10, 10, 14, 15, 10, 10, 14, 15. And L port is fine because meta exploit will handle it. And then we could have just done run. Uh, and then we could have realized we needed to set our hosts to 10.10.10.4. Then 10, 10 we could have done run. And we could have just watched it all work. And then we could have gone show sessions. Uh, lists. Help. Oh my God. This is where I get lost. Um, or I list the sessions or join a session. Um, so I'm in the interpreter module now, right? And I need to do info load pivot run use um do I just do shell? Yeah. Who am I? Mm, Windows XP, so probably doesn't work that way. Uh, then we could have gone like that. And I don't even know if I'm a regular user or what, but let's just see. Yeah, there's the root. Okay. So no proof -esque required. Okay. Go back to my adventure mode. Put in the root flag. Submit. Um, <clears throat> and then I assume the other flag is somewhere around here. Maybe it's John. John the dumbass pen tester. 
There it is. Okay. There we go. It's done. All right. We're now at one hour, five minutes. Quick postmortem. That was a bunch of very, very silly mistakes on my behalf. Um, totally went down a bunch of different rabbit holes. Um, don't have a bunch of trusted, I mean, at the outset, don't have a bunch of trusted enumeration um, pathways that I can follow for a single service. Like I was just spamming random stuff. Um, the actual vulnerability assessment, um, you know, was turning up the right thing. It was just, it turned up two different vulnerabilities, one of which was a bit of a red herring. And I got so fixated on that, I didn't actually read through the rest of the vulnerability scan um, or script uh, output. And so then I got caught up in this rabbit hole of trying to make Eternal Blue work on an architecture and a platform that it never intended to work on. Eternal Blue was looks like it was only 64-bit, but because of the version number of Windows XP being lower than Windows 2000, it always reports as vulnerable. So, um, yeah, really frustrating there. Um, I'm going to wrap it up and move on with my life. I'm going to uh, go and have a little break and um, chalk up the lesson there. Um, yeah, so definitely going to be working on some stronger um, pre-programmed uh, enumeration pathways, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, look, I'm sure I've, I've been a software developer before. I know that, you know, it's everyone goes through this phase where they make a, a bunch of common mistakes so they have the answer staring them right in the face for a long time um and then they suddenly realize what's going on so yeah um thanks everyone for for watching and uh you know this is all part of the process it's naked ctf this is not a walkthrough if it was a walkthrough that would have been like about five minutes um but that's the the reason that i, I keep the camera rolling so to speak is to capture the um trials and tribulations of doing uh pen testing all right, thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.